Welcome again, Virgo. It's November 2024, and let me start the wheel of your life in motion. Interesting month because straight off the mark, we have a new moon there in the third house of your horoscope. So, what does it mean? The new moon is all about beginnings, commencement, fresh start. We see the third house having to do with communication, but more importantly, thinking is a particularly potent new moon and one which is asking you to radically shift your perspective in terms of the way that you think. Thinking is destiny. And so the quality of your thoughts will determine exactly what's going to happen in your life. And so, so many of the wise people and so, so many successful entrepreneurs that thought the positivity or negativity will in itself determine the outcome of your life. So for you, the process of thinking, the way you communicate, the impact that words have on the world around you will be very, very important at this time. You notice here the third house also has the influence of Uranus here retrograde. So Uranus is a progressive planet, a planet that doesn't think in terms of the typical order of things. So there may be some technologies or unusual people that you're coming in contact with right now who are able to help you shift that pattern that has maybe been ingrained within you for so many years. Uh, there are two components of this. One is uh, the courage to be able to think differently and to stand up to those who expect you to think and act in the way you always have. And the second one is trust. To trust that when you do start changing your thinking, the universe does kick in and provide you with the necessary response. Mars moves to your 12th house. So there's a high degree of energy focused on the internal part of your life. The 12th house is a secluded space of your horoscope uh, and one which requires you to disconnect in a way from your typical normal uh, people. And that's going to be difficult this month, Virgo, because you see Venus here sliding into this fifth house of love and romance around the 14th of November. The basic drive is to be alone, to work through this stuff, to think about thinking, to think about what it is you wish in life. And that's also to do with the new moon, moon ruling your 11th house of life goals. So you've got this juxtaposed against this really pleasure seeking Venus in your fifth house. And you can see here, there's also hard aspects from uh, the nodes, which are the, the karmic points in your horoscope. This is what we call a T-square, pointing fairly and squarely at Venus here. You're challenged in some ways to um, stay away from that sort of activity. But, you know, Venus is a friendly planet. It's a lucky planet. It rules your finances. Here it is in the speculative area. You may go against this inner drive to solve those issues that have been plaguing you for some time. Preferably is to balance that. A little bit of pleasure, a little bit of solitude, uh, and that way you don't have to surrender to either or. The sun moves to this fourth house. There, Mercury is already transiting this area. Uh, and on the 22nd, you'll see that the family affairs will be spotlighted. Properties are also indicated in this. Uh, fixed assets of any sort. Vehicles, too, come under the jurisdiction of this fourth house, according to some of my teachers. Some uh, Westerners would say the third house. Um, in any case, the acquisition of big ticket items is indicated here. I missed the full moon here in the 10th house, which takes place, I think, around the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, 
It'll be around the 16th, my apologies. So that, that full moon in your 10th house, close to the retrograde Jupiter, uh, has a lot to say about your professional activities. Um, the retrograde Jupiter there, a rethink in that area as well. You're rethinking your work while you're rethinking your thinking. So it's all very fascinating stuff, still against the backdrop of that slow-moving Saturn, which is a little problematic for your relationships. It puts the brakes on. You've got retrograde Neptune there. You know, the practical doesn't really meet the ideal. That's the issue with these two planets. Uh, and then you've got right at the tail end of the month, this transit of the transformational Pluto into your sixth house of health and workplace activity. That we're going to talk more on next month. In the meantime, you can get a more detailed analysis to fill in some of the holes, which I'm sure you have, because I normally jump around a little bit, as you can see. Um, and that's at the link below. Don't forget to subscribe, help the channel along. We need your assistance. That's all I ask. A little bit of a like, a little bit of a subscribe, and you're welcome to drop me a line if you want uh, to organize a reading or to ask me some technical questions. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next month. Till then, good luck. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.